Hello again everybody and welcome to another single mission flown in the DCS A10C Warthog and this one's going to be a user created mission it's called Broken Wing and it's the single player version this is also flyable as a multiplayer version of the same mission so let me go through the description real quick two hours ago a black spec ops UH-60 callsign Broken Wing crashed near the Russian border a Marine Corps common engineer team callsign Roadkill is en route to recover the helo but intel sources now indicate that the Russians are preparing to mount a raid across the border to steal the bird's classified avionics. Roadkill has been retasked to push the crash site at maximum speed and to use explosives to destroy the Blackhawk before the Russians get to it. Your task is to protect Roadkill and to respond to the Russian incursion with decisive force. And at this time I'll take the briefing from the war document that was attached with the mission download and I'll start up here at the top with the situation for enemy forces. Like the enemy disposition, ground, a task force consisting of a platoon-sized armored recon element and a reinforced platoon-sized assault force is expected. Both enemy armor formations will deploy with attached mobile Shilka SA-9 air defense units. Those are good, a low altitude, infrared guided air defense units. Very, very deadly if I get in close on them and can't pick them up. And in the air, we have two MiG-23 floggers. Older type aircraft, but still, if they match up with a... A-10, I, I think the flogger is going to come out on top in the majority of those cases. And friendly forces, I have Roadkill. That's a common engineer team consisting of four LAV-25s and two Humvees with attached support of two Striker ATGMs. So a total of eight vehicles moving into the area. You can see over here on the map that those vehicles are going to move, be moving up the coast road into the area where the Hilo is down. So I've also got here an F-15 cap, which I'm about to get to in the text of the briefing. A-10 close air support and A-10 close air support and strike with those MiG-23s expected to be coming down, I would assume, from the northwest. So let's see what else we have here. For a combat air patrol on my side, two F-15C callsign Uzi are about to push from Sanaki Kolki to fly cap. And CAS slash strike, two A-10Cs callsign Springfield are about to push from Tsukimi Babushara to provide closer support for roadkill to help secure the crash site and interdict all enemy units maneuvering south of the border. And I believe Springfield is going to be my flight. I'm going to have the option of uh, choosing my flight. I could fly this the F-15s if I wanted to, but I think Springfield is the one that this is set up that is the kind of the primary protagonist here. And I also have two A-10s close on Dodge holding south of the AO, and they can be deployed as a striker flight. So that'll be Uzi right there along the coast Springfield this will be me and then Dodge down to the south available for tasking I wonder if it's, it might be through the F10 menu that's how it's usually done and for AWACS I have Overlord on station transmitting on 255 VHF FM so that'll be on my it'll actually be on my UHF radio although 255 it, it technically is on the VHF fan and seed dispersion of enemy air defenses no dedicated seed or DAD is available at this time a-10 flights must perform our own seed against local air defenses attached to the enemy armor. So that's going to mean SA-9s. You can kind of see where this is going. So standing off and identifying the air defenses, taking them out, and then going in to take out the rest of the stuff is going to be key here. Okay, maneuver. Enemy. Recon. We believe that the Russian recon formation will push southeast through the town of uh, Lidsley or Lesleeds in order to form a bridgehead at the east end of the town to screen and block Roadkill's only access point to the crash site from the north. Assault. The enemy assault group will either reinforce the recon units in Leslie's or will divert to the east after crossing Red Bridge, approaching the crash site from high ground to the northeast, working with the recon group in the town to attempt a pincer maneuver against the objective. And we have a little a map down here showing ex exactly what I just described there. So the Red Forces coming across Red Bridge, some of them going north to uh, maneuver on Broken Wing, that's the down helo, the rest coming along the coast, and trying to cut us off by taking Blue Bridge, which is the only access point to the helo. So my forces are going to be coming across the bridge, the Red Forces are going to be moving along the road to cut us off and to secure the bridge so that we either can't access the area or the retreat is cut off from the area. And in the air, the AO will not be a permissive environment for blue casts as long as the threat exists from the MiG-23 cap and the SA-9 units embedded with the ground forces. So 
We have a little bit of groundwork ahead of us before I can move in and start to take out these units that are moving in on the helo. And on the friendly side, Combat Air Patrol Blue F-15s will deploy to intercept Red Caps south of the border and to secure the AO for safe operations of the Cassin Zone. So I just need to hold back in my E-10s, let the F-15s do their job, and Uzi will fly cap in the zone until the crash site has been secured and the UH-60 destroyed. Now, close air support, both CAS flights have flight plan holds and should hold and push at the discretion of flight leads according to their assignment of remaining threats from the red cap. Or, I'm sorry, the assessment for, of the uh, red cap. Overlord will provide sit reps and update CAS flight times uh, regarding Uzi's arrival in the AO and elimination of the enemy cap. And Grand Slam, that's going to be sort of like a... I think in this context, and this is set up as like a standard briefing, whoever did this um, either has a military background or did their homework on the format and the uh, basic information provided. So Grand Slam, that'll be just a radio call coming from the AWACS overlord telling me that the cap has been eliminated. And that'll be, I think that'll be a good indication that the mission is really kicked off and that I need to go in and start to uh, do my close air support role at that point. Now, operational references. The following mission steer points are available to all cast flights. Blue Bridge, and that's the bridge or the road kills, only possible approach point to the crash site from the southeast and therefore it's a choke point. So that's right down here. And this will be, I take this to mean that it will be available if I go to the mission setting on my CDU. I'll have these up as a mission steer points, not associated with the flight plan, but mission steer points. So it'll be interesting to see how that's going to be set up. I have Red Bridge, and that's the bridge, and the likely border crossing point for enemy ground forces and is therefore a choke point, and that's right here. That's actually the uh, Georgia-Russia border, if I'm not mistaken, right there to the uh, east of uh, Sochi Adler. And I have the coastal road in the town, and the steer point marks the coastal road likely to be taken by enemy ground forces approaching Blue Bridge, and that's right down here along the road along the coast to Blue Bridge from Red Bridge, Broken Wing. This stair point ma marks the exact location of the crashed helo. So I'll be able to cycle between, hopefully, these four points and just have them as a quick reference. So if I hear radio calls saying that something is happening, say at Red Bridge or along the coast road, I'll just be able to snap the stair point over there. If I have my targeting pod up, I'll be able to snap it over there into the area. And if I'm just looking with my eyes, I'll have a good idea of where these reference points are. Now for comms, all elements will use 255 VHF-FM for tactical comms, that's easy. Rules of engagement, all military vehicles on the Russian side and personnel south of the border will be violating Georgian ter territorial sovereignty. Allied units are authorized to attach, attack any such unit preemptively if necessary. So anything to the east of Red Bridge is going to be a valid target. Okay, easy enough. Now, victory conditions, I'm not so much worried about, I, I never worry about the points I get or the how the mission says I did, but the conditions, I'm looking to destroy the helo and have roadkill. My ground units sustain no casualties, but I'll still get a win if I destroy the helo and they sustain some casualties. I'll get a loss if the helo was destroyed and I lose more than 50% of my force, and I definitely lose if roadkill gets wiped out. So mission editor notes, this mission is flyable in one of three roles, assuming the player has DCS work with both Flaming Clips 3 and the ATC module. Two of these roles will spawn as AI flights with identical tasking if the player does not choose to fly them. So yeah, that's that's perfect. That's exactly what I look for in a mission because, and I'll, I'll get to this when I do a DCS combined arms mission, that might be coming up next, but what really annoys me there is that if you choose a DCS combined arms mission as the tactical commander, your flight, the flight that you would normally be flying as in the A-10, it just disappears. It doesn't spawn as an AI flight, So, but more to come on that in combined arms. But I like the way that this mission is set up. I like the bridging format. I like everything about this that I'm seeing so far. And now in the mission planner, I have my flight taking off from right here, Tsukumi, Tsukimi Babushara, and I'm going to be uh, taking off initially, holding right here, basically over the airfield, waiting for that call to come in, saying that the MiG-23 threat has been neutralized by the F-15s taking off from Snaki Kolki out here to my southeast. At that point, let me see, I've got 
uh, the coast out here. I've got terrain up here to the north that I can hold over if I, I need to stay low. So I think what I'll do is I'll kind of come up here and a good hold point if I really needed a place to kind of uh, to kind of hide. I mean, it doesn't look like I had any, any allied air defenses other than the F-15s down here in my area that I could hold over and kind of be underneath that air defense umbrella. So I think the best thing for me to do is to take off, hit up here to the right, up here so that I have a little bit of a, a terrain masking ability up here, and then push down the coast, not over the water, but more uh, over here, kind of using the broken, ter broken terrain to kind of mask my approach. It's going to be a, a more or less a daylight mission, kind of uh, at the break of dawn here. So I do worry about them picking me up visually. So especially this one little place right here where it kind of juts out a little bit, this little uh, spot right here, the mountain range comes down almost uh, actually right down to the coast. I mean, that's a that's actually a very good place for me to hold right right in here just kind of peeking over this little crest into the area if I'm wanting to stay at long range look in there with my targeting pod for example and then I press in and it's just uh, really nowhere to hide unless I come out here way way over the terrain and that's a little bit too far out so I'm going to be a little bit limited when it comes to options over the target for terrain masking although I do have this little little uh, terrain feature right here that I could duck into if I needed to but again that's still a little bit further away than ideally I would want to be and I probably will end up being uh, once I well once I run out of Mavericks and start having to employ with uh, bombs and gun so I think that sounds about like a plan to me now I also have this A-10 flight a call sign Dodge, which is going to be taking out the bridge if needed, and I wonder if I call that in or if it's something that's kicked off automatically by the AI. We'll have to see once we get into the mission how I'm going to interact with the different flight members and with the different elements we have involved. Now here's my Marine Corps ground unit, who is going to be coming up the coast along the road over Blue Bridge, just like it said during the briefing, up the road to Broken Wing. And it'll be them that blows the helo and not the A-10s like I was thinking a little bit. That kind of confused me in the mission briefing. So they'll go in, they'll hopefully get out of there over Blue Bridge, but I just need to be on the lookout for any enemy forces coming across the border using Red Bridge, down the coast, and to the north like it warned me they will probably be doing during the briefing. So, okay, so that's the overall plan. Now, let me have a closer look at my flight and see what the loadout is. Now, it's a custom payload. I'm not sure exactly what the payload is. Um, so, do I go with a custom loadout or do I go with something of my own? I'm going to go with something of my own here. So, uh, give me a second. I'll come back with a, a good payload that I think is going to be suitable for the situation. So, see you in a second. So the loadout that I chose is a little bit old school. It's uh, two by CBU 97s and two by Mark 82 Air on my inboard wing stations, and I'm also taking up uh, four total AGM 65Ds on Lao 88s. So no precision guided munitions or JDAMs or laser guided bombs, although the Mavericks do qualify as a precision guided munition, just of a different type. And the wingman, I didn't even check on the wingman. Yeah, the wingman, I'm just going to leave with whatever the intended payload was. That might be. Uh, a wiser call all around depending on what that was but yeah I, I like this loadout well I don't like it specifically for the mission type I just like it because it's a different loadout it's something that I uh, hardly ever fly with okay so we're going up with the uh, 104th fighter squadron Maryland Air National Guard paint scheme combat mix uh, mix of uh, chaff and flare now thinking about this my primary threat this time is SA-9 so what I want to do and this is something that I rarely do I actually never do this um, it just occurred to me right now. I want to max out on the flare load. So I'm going to go, am I going to have any radar guided threats? Yeah, the MiG-23. So I do need to take some chaff for the MiG-23s in case they do become a threat. But I want to maximize the number of flare that I have because of that short range IR guided SAM threat. So 60 chaff, 210 flare. Sounds like a plan to me. Now that does bump my total weight up to 41,000 pounds, but yeah, that's still just fine. I'll burn up a little bit of fuel. Actually, I'll bring my fuel load down to about 50%. And that brings me down to about 39,000 pounds. Still a little bit heavy, but I'll, I'll have a feeling I'll be getting light quickly as this thing goes and progresses. So 
I think that's all I've got for the briefing. I think that's about as good a plan as I can come up with, just holding up here, kind of using the terrain to mask my approach as much as possible, although I'm going to be way out in the open once I get into the supported area. And this has been kind of a long briefing, so I think I'm going to take a break here and get airborne in the next video. So thanks again for watching everybody, and as always with the new series, if you're enjoying the videos or like the things that I do, please help me out by leaving a like, or if you want to see these as they come out without having to wait for a forum post or uh, some silliness like that, uh, do consider subscribing to the channel, and by all means leave comments. Your feedback is uh, much appreciated. I learn a lot from every mission because there's always something that I miss, and always something that somebody brings up that I just a facepalm over afterwards. So that is much appreciated. And thanks again, everybody. I'll see you next time.